Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churin, and as always, welcome to our show. Well, guys, it's a tough moment for our us players and definitely some of our Yaz. You know, we have a lot of Yaz out injured at the moment. And, uh, yeah, it's just been a really dark period of the season so far. Um, you know, a lot of players injured, a lot of players not playing well at the moment. So, you know, kind of disappointing to see. But we'll, you know, we'll talk about those injuries today. We'll also talk about a player over in Italy who's really starting to turn it on um, and find some success. So, you know, uh, Small, bright, bright spot in the, uh, you know, USMNT fold at the moment. But uh, yeah, all that and more in today's episode. So let's get to it. So the first player we want to talk about today is Andrea Novakovic. So Andrea got a goal for Frosinone in their big 1-0 win over uh, Salern Natana. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, yeah, they got a big 1-0 win. So you know, Frosinone are challenging for promotion in Serie B. And right now that win moves them up into second place and an automatic promotion position. So, uh, yeah, just just really good for Andrea to help his club, you know, climb into that promotion spot. And, uh, you know, Andrea's now started the last four games for Frosinone. They've won all four of them. And uh, Andrea, especially the past two games, has scored goals for them. So, um, yeah, he's really starting to find his form um, in Italy. You know, when he made the move over to Italy this season from uh, Reading and Fortuna Sitar last season, it was, you know, kind of a, a bold move, I would say. You know, we don't see too many Americans make the move to Italy. And, uh, you know, he's kind of charting his own course at the moment. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be going well. You know, he's played in, I believe, 21 games so far this season. And, uh, you know, he spent a lot of time coming off the bench and recently he's been starting a lot of games for, for Frosinone. So, uh, yeah, I would say he's really starting to find his form with them. Um, you know, he's really helping them get to that point where they want to, to be at right now, which is, you know, challenging for promotion and, uh, you know, potentially climbing back to Serie A and, and, uh, yeah, getting into the, you know, the first league there in, in Italy, that's definitely the goal. So, Really good to see for Andrea. Um, I'm not sure if we see him, you know, this March with the USMNT uh, at the moment, like I alluded to in our in our intro there. You know, there's a lot of injuries going on. You know, you have Christian Pulisic out, uh, Tyler Adams, uh, Tim Way is out, hasn't really been around this season at all. Um, so with some of those injuries and then also, you know, you have the Olympic qualifiers coming up at the end of March. Uh, it might open the door for Andrea. And, uh, you know, he's in in good form at the moment. So I think, uh, you know, if it comes to it, I'm not sure exactly, you know, how <laughs> Greg Berhalter and Jason Christ are going to, you know, pick players for this, you know, this March window and the two teams that are going to be, um, you know, having players called up to them. But, you know, I think there's a case to be made for Andrea um, at the moment, you know, the strikers for the full national team, you would have to think Jossie Zardes is going to be, Kind of the first name on the on the team sheet uh, at the moment. Uh, you know, Josie Altador seems like he's healthy at the moment. Um, he started Toronto FC's first game over the weekend. So uh, he might be a name that gets called up, especially for some of these more high profile friendlies. Uh, you know, the other name that's that's got to be in the in the fold right now is Josh Sargent. But, uh, you know, Josh is really playing not so great and he's not really getting time at the moment. So. I think there's, you know, definitely a case to be made there that Andrea could sneak onto this roster. Um, you know, there's not too many other other options at striker. It seems like, you know, some of the other options like potentially Mason Toy, Jesus Ferreira might get called up to the U23 team. And uh, yeah, I, I just think, uh, you know, I think now could be a good time to see Andrea kind of push back into the USMNT fold. Um, you know, these are some high profile friendlies and they're in Europe. So um, it might make sense to call in some of the, the European players to, to kind of, you know, have that contingent get together um, as opposed to some of the MLS players who just started their season and might not be in form. Um, 
So maybe that's another slant to take on it too. But so far we like what we see from Madria in Italy. And uh, yeah, we hope we can, you know, continue to see him getting starts and continuing to score crucial goals for his team because, you know, that's what he needs to really, you know, climb the ladder in Italy and, and make a case for, uh, you know, his, his spot on the USMNT as well. So uh, yeah, we'll report back on, uh, you know, anything else that happens with Andrea here in the near future. And uh, yeah, we look forward to it. Now moving over to uh, ooh, the Netherlands, and we're going to talk about Serginho Dest. So Serginho, unfortunately, did not have such a great game uh, this weekend. Uh, Ajax lost to Azed Alkmaar uh, 2-0, and Azed actually pulled even with them in the air to VC, uh, tying them for first. So yeah, Ajax have really just not been in a good spot to start 2020. Um, they failed out of the Champions League, you know, just last week. So, you know, they went from going to the final last year, or I guess they didn't make it to the final. They made it to the semifinal last year and, you know, going on this really impressive run in the Champions League to falling out of, sorry, they fell out of the Europa League this <laughs> early this past week. So, uh, yeah, they went from, you know, going to the semifinal last year in the Champions League to then getting, uh, you know, uh, not qualifying for the knockout round of the Champions League to now falling out of the Europa League to a team, uh, Getafe, from, uh, you know, La Liga over in Spain. So not the best uh, start to 2020 for them. Um, you know, this is a team that lost some players last year and, uh, you know, Serginho Dest has really taken advantage of, of some of these positions where uh, Ajax has had to kind of regroup or recharge this year. And, uh, yeah, it's good to see him on the pitch, but just at the moment, it doesn't seem like Ajax as a team are really playing well. And, uh, you know, in this game, Serginho had had a, a moment where I believe he got kind of uh, – you know, he kind of got caught with his pants down, so to speak, um, and, and kind of got embarrassed by a, by a skill move in this game. So not not great to see there. But, uh, yeah, Ajax as a whole, just just really, really, you know, reeling at the moment. So hopefully, you know, we see Serginho now with, with the USMNT here at the end of March uh, playing against the Netherlands and, and Wales. It seems like he's one of the more high-profile USMNT players at the moment that's not injured. So, um Will definitely be good to see him, you know, called up for those friendlies. You got to think he's going to get called up for those friendlies if if he can go for them. So, yeah, you know, uh, hopefully Ajax and, and Serginho can kind of get back on track here. It's it's good to see him continue to get starts and um, you know get more game time under his belt. He's still only, I believe, 19 years old, 18 years old. So, um, yeah, you know, there is going to be some rough patches. There is going to be a few games where he's uh, you know, exposed to some learning moments and teaching moments. So, um, you know, nothing out of the ordinary for a young player, but, uh, you know, definitely want to see him uh, you know, get past some of these rough patches and see Ajax kind of, you know, you know, see him help Ajax get back to, uh, you know, their dominant selves. So, yeah, that's all we have for Serginho this week. Um, yeah, again, not the best, but uh, hopefully, you know, there's more good things to come in the future. Now heading over to Germany, we want to touch on uh, Wes McKinney, who as well did not have such a great week. And, uh, you know, Weston started, played 90 minutes uh, for Schalke in their 3-0 loss to Köln. So Schalke, again, another team just like Ajax have really been reeling in 2020. I believe they've only won one game in the past seven games. So not good for a team that in the first half of the season was really challenging for a Champions League position and were, you know, they looked very different from the team last year that was almost battling relegation. And uh, it seems like they've kind of had their their form dip here in 2020 and have started to look a little bit like the team from last year, which is, you know, not what you want them to be uh, to be looking like and not what you want Wes McKinney to be playing a part in. So, uh, you know, it, I can't say this game was really Weston McKinney's fault. You know, he didn't play great. He was a little inconsistent. And, um, you know, just Schalke as a whole seemed to really be struggling to score goals. So, uh, you know, right now they've they've scored five goals in those past seven games. So, yeah, the fact that their, you know, goal scored ratio is under one, <laughs> one goal per game is, is pretty disappointing. So, 
uh, yeah, it's just Schalke are really in a in a rough patch at the moment, and uh, you know Weston, you know, is trying to do all he can. Um, like I said, th- this loss wasn't really on his shoulders, in my opinion. Um, you know, like I said, didn't have the best game, but um, definitely wasn't at fault for uh, you know the loss here on the day. So uh, the good thing though for Schalke is they still sit in sixth, so uh, they're still in that playoff Europe you know, Europa League qualifying position. So, um, you know, that's not horrible at the moment. Um, you know, they are, are reeling, so they got to kind of get their feet back under them. But um, once they do, hopefully they can, you know, still challenge for that spot. And um, they're, they're very far back, though, from, from, I believe, fifth place. They're in sixth place at the moment. And I think the gap is eight points. So, uh, you know, those top five teams have really separated them themselves from the field and, uh, Schalke kind of lead the best of the rest, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't get any easier. Schalke next week will, will go on and face Bayern. So, uh, yeah, you know, not the team you want to see on the, uh, you know, the fixture list coming up, uh, after you're struggling. So, uh, we'll see, you know, Weston should probably start this game, um, yeah, it'll just be it'll be a game where Schalke will really have to turn it on and and you know really be laser laser focused and um, you know hopefully that type of game and rivalry or you know just that atmosphere will kind of bring out the best in Schalke and hopefully the best in Weston and we get to see uh, you know a good game from him against you know definitely the best team in the the Bundesliga at the moment. So uh, yeah, that's that's again all for Weston today and. Uh, Yeah, we'll check back in hopefully next week. So now moving to our final player for today, a quick episode, unfortunately, uh, and that would be Tim Weah. So Tim Weah has been ruled out for the rest of the season. Um, That came from his manager this this past weekend. So, uh, you know, Tim Weah's season really ended right as it was getting started. Um, I believe he played in two games before he had an injury, uh, you know, right at the end of August there and came back a few weeks ago got injured in that game. And now it seems like his, his 2020 season or uh, the spring part of his 2020 season is over. So not, not good. And it just adds to a long list of players at the moment who are out with injury. So kind of touched on it earlier, but right now we have Christian Pulisic out injured, uh, Tyler Adams, Dwayne Holmes, Anthony Robinson's out injured, Zach Steffen's out injured. Uh, I feel like there's even one or two more that I'm missing. So, you know, it's just a long list. Um, really unfortunate to see some of these these friendlies in March were were really you know going to be exciting games if we had a healthy um, you know core of players that were able to take part in these games. But now it seems like we're we're really going to be depleted. Uh, so you know it is what it is. Uh, you know we really just want to be healthy for uh, Olymp- well not really Olympic qualifying but uh, World Cup qualifying later this year. So. As long as we can, uh, you know, get healthy for that, and you know, some of these players will be back before the end of the season. It's all these injuries aren't like Tim Weah, where where players are going to be out for the rest of the spring. But uh, you know, some of the players like like Christian Pulisic's been out a long time now. We'll really have to kind of get into the fold again at Chelsea, which you know isn't a small undertaking, um, especially in the position that they're in right now, where you know every game is kind of a a must win game or at least a must get points game. So, uh, yeah. And then you got, you know, Zach Steffen who, uh, just seems to not be able to get healthy. Um, seems to have that nagging, uh, I believe it's a, I believe it's a groin injury. It might be a knee injury. Um, so, you know, that's just something that's really disappointing. And, um, you know, Zach Steffen's really kind of the only goalkeeper that's, uh, playing at a high level at the moment. So, uh, you know, that's, yeah, that's not great for us. And um, yeah, then you have some other players like, you know, Tyler Adams, Dwayne Holmes was playing really well and now is, now is on the sidelines um, and has been for a few weeks now. So uh, yeah, we'll just have to, you know, keep an eye on all these injuries and hopefully, uh, you know, the players that can kind of step up in their absence can, can help us at least look respectable against uh, the Netherlands and Wales and, um, you know, hopefully that won't take too many players away from that Olympic qualifying team, because uh, in my opinion, I know me and Pat have talked about this a lot. Uh, you know, we, we think that the Olympics is something we should prioritize. It's, it's a competition that could really set the tone for World Cup qualifying. And, um, 
really kind of showcase the talent that we have in America and some of the, you know, upcoming players that, that really should, uh, you know, teams, other players, other nations should really be, uh, you know, aware of and, and keep an eye out for. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, this injury crisis ends soon and uh, we can, you know, see a lot of our players back on the pitch because, uh, yeah, it makes it makes episodes tough to talk about too with, with a lot of uh, negative things happening. So with that being said, now let's head over to Quick Kicks. All right, guys, it's Pat's favorite time of the show, and that would be Quick Kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altador over the wall. So to start quick kicks today, we have Gio Rena and Gio subbed on for the final nine minutes of Dortmund's uh, 1-0 win over FC SC Freiburg. Now, staying in Germany, we have Chris Richards. So Chris actually started and played 90 minutes yet again at center back for Bayern 2, and that was in their big 1-0 win uh, over the weekend. Now, moving over to the Netherlands, we have Alex Mendez. And Alex uh, came on for the final 31 minutes for Young Ajax, and that was in their 2-2 draw. Now going, sorry, staying in the Netherlands, we have Chris Glosser, and Chris started and played 90 minutes for Young PSV, but that was in a 4-2 loss. Um, so Young PSV still finding it hard to uh, you know grind out uh, results. Now heading over to Belgium, we have Chris Durkin, and Chris played uh, started and played 90 minutes and that was in St. Truden's 3-0 uh, loss. So uh, good to see Chris on the pitch again, but not the best result. Uh, heading over to England, we have Cameron Carter-Vickers. And Cameron continued his uh, his good play and started and, and played 90 minutes for Lutton Town. And that was in their 1-1 draw with Stoke. Staying in England, we have Charlie Kelman. And Charlie started and played 90 minutes for Southend United. And that was in their 2-1 loss. Uh, again, staying in England, we have Matt Miazga, who is finally back from injury. So at least one one player back from injury. And uh, Matt started and played 90 minutes for Reading, and that was in their 2-0 win. So some good news there. Now heading over to Denmark, we have Christian Kappas, as well as uh, Emmanuel Sabi. So uh, both started for Hobro, IK. Uh, Kappas played 90 minutes, Sabi played 82 minutes, and that was in a 0-0 draw for Hobro. So, uh, again, Hobro look like they're going to face that relegation battle. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if either player gets released for the Olympic qualifying cycle coming up here. Um, not really sure. It's, it's a tough position for them to be in. So, yeah. Now uh, heading over to Mexico, we have Sebastian Saucedo. And Sebastian started and played 63 minutes, but that was in Pumas' uh, 3-0 loss to Tigres. So tough loss there, but Tigres is definitely a good team. So uh, really no shame, I guess, in that. Uh, and now going back to Germany, we have Tim Tillman, who uh, has looked pretty good since moving to Greuther Firth. And this weekend, he actually started and played 77 minutes in first 2-0 win. So good to see uh, Tim getting consistent minutes now. And that's it for today's episode, guys. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. Um, and also make sure you check out our awesome Instagram and Twitter accounts. You know, we try to post uh, on Instagram pretty regularly Twitter maybe not so much at the moment but uh yeah you know it's been tough with with a lot of uh sour news so uh definitely give us a give us a follow there we hope to have more content for you guys here in the coming weeks especially as the international windows approach and uh yeah again tough episode today not too much to talk about unfortunately um you know hopefully we get some some good health here uh in the next few weeks and you know, we get some players back on the pitch, but uh, yeah, it's all leading up to one day. And that one day is we will win the World Cup.